A Romantic Expectation. Level 8, Isle of the Dead, a masterpiece by Arnold Birklin, the Swiss painter who studied in Florence. And this is the English cemetery. A dead man has fallen down and splashing about has pushed Marcel onto a gloomy landscape. Bewitched by Friedrich, the great 19th century romantic. Now, though, he has to defend himself from this centaur, this half-man, half-horse who is symbolically skeletonized. He's not alone. There's the main centaur and other centaurs who join the scuffle against Marcel. The largest centaur is hurling large stones we've already seen. Right at Marcel's head. Yes, they're the stones that come from Magritte's factory. He's kicked him out of the game, put him out of action, and this boat has appeared as you see a gondola, stereotype of Venetian romanticism. Yes. And if Marcel manages to get in the gondola, he'll finally be able to cross the body of water. He's picked up some energy from the Mazzocchio and is now heading towards the gondola to confront the sea. The sea that is infested with the dead. The dead of Delacroix, aren't they? Yes, they come from the boat that also attacked Dante and Virgil. In this love for the Gothic and Neo-Gothic, like these fantastic spires from the Sagrada Familia by Gaudí. Yes, he passes in the middle of them and arrives directly on the edge of the whirlpool. The whirlpool reminds me of A Descent into the Maelstrom, recounted in Edgar Allan Poe's fantasy tale. The whirlpool must not be avoided, but in this case sought out. For it is through this whirlpool that Marcel will be able to reach the depths of the abyss. Yes, the romantic unconscious that absorbs him and will drag him up to... Well, we shall see. He made it. Meanwhile, centripetal force has taken him to the center of the whirlpool. Kneecapped. Those legs belong to Robert Gober, who invented them in the 1980s. They're stuck into this sort of plug that keeps this romantic universe sealed. Rose c'est la vie. The mermaids have knocked him out because though they're on leashes like sharks, they're still fascinating, and they too painted by Brooklyn. Mind those legs. Watch out for the legs. Marcel has to pull this off. Now he has freed the mermaid, then the plug, and now madness has made its appearance. Madness, painted by Odillon Redon, has emerged and will instruct our Dadaist on how to re-emerge, and he's made it clear by means of little bells like seven notes. And now here comes the... The eye. The aerostatic eye. Yes, cyclopean and symbolic by Odeon Redon. And now the most difficult undertaking awaits Marcel, that of getting into this hot air balloon. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the surrounding landscape. The middle portion of the landscape is by Gustave Moreau, a French painter, while on, on the sides we can recognize the surrealism of Max Ernst, a great painter. Displaying a good sense of balance, Marcel is now stepping into the hot air balloon, which begins to rise. Now he goes where the eye sets its gaze, and he has to be careful where it looks. Meanwhile, he re-emerges. There he is. Watch out! He has to get to the middle. No! Oh, no. He's run into Gaudi's spire and lost his second life. He's got a third life left to head straight towards the Isle of the Dead. Life is still rosy, but he has to concentrate his symbolic gaze and heighten it in his romantic concept. He does, if he wants to reach the center of this masterpiece, which, moreover, was one of Hitler's favorites. We know that Arnold Brooklyn painted various versions of this work. Marcel has finally freed it. Free at last. 